uh, this is the second problem on the conservation of energy and the problem reads you have a 2 kilogram block and it is being pushed against a spring with a negligible mass and force constant of 400 newtons per meter compressing it to 0 0.220 meters when the block is released it moves along a frictionless horizontal surface and then up a frictionless incline with slope of 37 degrees now i want you to take special attention of these terms that are used in the problem the first is um this term here it moves along a frictionless horizontal surface and that has a great implication on the problem which we will go back later and also some of the things that we need to note is it is being compressed at 0 0.220 meters so that is your x in the Hooke's law equation if you remember the f is equal to negative kx that one over there now the first uh, thing that is asked from the problem is what is the speed of the block as it slides along the horizontal surface after leaving the spring so it means to say it asks for the speed or the velocity of the block uh, it as it moves along this horizontal surface that means the frictionless horizontal surface so that means to say at point one point two and point three since the surface is frictionless it has the same velocity constant lang dapat yung velocity no acceleration because um the forces here um you can think of the forces as balance kay wala may um reactive force ni mo or wala kay kanabitang opposing force due to friction so that's one thing that you should understand about the problem now um I, another thing that i would like to emphasize is in most of our classes i always say that we can interchange our speed and velocity if we are dealing with the uh, motion along straight line and on the same direction and i would just like to explain that because in this case yeah not that for example if the speed is given to be like um three meters per second you just give the magnitude of that and that's it however if we say the velocity is three meters per second to the right then you have the magnitude and the velocity now take note that in describing situation A and B in this case, as long as I am on the same direction and on a straight line, uh, speed and velocity are interchangeable. So it doesn't really matter what you um, talk uh, or ask of either speed or velocities. Okay, so that is why in this case I don't want you to be um, uh, what's this Con uh, confused that you are looking for speed so this is just the same as looking for the velocity since we are on the same direction and on a straight line motion okay so i think that's that, that clears things up and i'm hoping that was helpful second one is um you are asked to find for how far does the block travel up in the incline before starting to slide down this is another thing that you need to note in the question because basically when the block the block will move up it will only slide down when this condition is meet when it has its velocity to be zero meters per second that is the time that it will start to slide down and that is very essential in the problem another thing is you are asked to find how far does the block travel so take note from the problem you actually can get height from this position from the top of the incline to the bottom you can get a height h of that but that is not what is asked of the problem because the problem asks how far it means to say that um, on the incline the problem particularly asks for this distance over here which will just denote as d that one that is what is being asked in the problem now, um, in any conservation of energy na problems that you have encountered, you would notice that I will always start by setting up points. Now, take note that I will denote this one over here as my point A. So, point A is where 
my spring is being compressed by the mass of 2 kg and then I will call this one as my point B just the end of the flat horizontal surface before moving up and I will call this one as my point C now the very idea that we set um, distinct points is for us to use that in our calculation and the just a simple reminder of ourselves that in all of these points the energies at all of that points are simply equal since the energy is conserved and um, there is no non-conservative force on the problem na, na that will complicate our solution so from this one uh, i could just have consider i could consider this point from point a to point b so what I'm practically doing here is I'm solving for what is asked in A for the velocity at point B. So basically, this thing, thing over here is just telling you that you take the sum of all the energies found at point A. So at point A, you have potential energy elastic because you have a spring. And probably you can have this one, but we will check if you have gravitational potential energy later and then the kinetic energy at point A. Now at point B, um, all of that energy must be equal to all of the energy at point B, which is this, this point over here. Um, the energies present at point B is, you know, you try to check whether there is a universal gravitational energy, I mean gravitational potential energy at point B. And of course, there is no elastic, there is no spring there. And then uh, possibly it could have a kinetic energy at point B. Now, upon inspection, if you try to look at the um, sketch over here, I have the freedom where I will set my height for potential energies. And I find it most convenient to set the measurement of my height along the floor. So that means to say this is where I set my measurement of h is equal to zero. Why that is convenient? Because that will make this gravitational potential energy at a to be zero as well as the gravitational potential energy at point B to be zero since the height is zero. Now at point A, another thing that you need to note at point A is that the kinetic energy is also zero. So you might wonder why the kinetic energy is zero. The explanation is just this one. We knew that kinetic energy is just one half mv squared. Now at point A, where your spring is actually compressed by 0 0.220 meters, prior to releasing, the velocity is actually zero. So it's not moving prior to being released. Or while it is being compressed, the velocity is zero. So that is why your kinetic energy, whenever this term over here is zero, your kinetic energy will also be zero. So from there, uh, you, you have this simplified equation um, UEA is just equal to this term, so I'm going to break down that equation. So I will deal with uh, one half. Okay, I'm just going to change the color. One half, um, the spring constant kx squared is equal to one half m, the velocity at b squared. Now, probably this is very familiar to you. The, because basically we ended up with the same equation as a previous example. So from here, um, we're going to isolate VB. So the best thing that I will do first is to multiply both sides by 2. And when I do that, I will get this equation, which is somehow simpler. Kx squared is equal to mvb squared. Now I am looking for VB, so I will just have to multiply both sides of the equation by mass thereby further isolating my VB, which is my goal. Now, upon doing that, I end up with uh, KX squared all over the mass is just equal to VB squared. Now, I'm going to take the positive root on both sides. So that means to say I now have an expression for my velocity at B, which is just equal to the square root of KX squared all over M. Okay? So, yep, maybe I'll just have it like that. So, I'm just going to interchange the positions of that. Uh, VB is equal to K. The K as given in the problem is this one, 400 newtons per meter. This is the spring's force constant. 
So, 400 newtons per meter. Again, uh, one thing that I would like to remind you is to check always the units. So, this is an SI, so we're good. For X is actually negative in the sense that we are moving to the left. So, that's negative 0 0.220 meters. But that won't matter much since you are squaring. So, any number squared will end up with positive. Um, okay, in terms of the units, we have no problem also because that is in meters. And then uh, the mass is 2 kilograms, which is also in SI, or standard unit, so we don't have a problem with that. Okay, um, why I emphasize the units? Because, of course, if there are units na non-SI, and our units is, the rest of the units are in SI, then you have to convert. So when you try to plug in these values in your calculator, that will give you 3.11 meters per second. It means to say that this is the velocity along the flat surface. So again, I would just like to emphasize whether we are talking of the velocity at this point, at this point, at this point, or at this point, they all have the same velocity. And that is 3.11 meters per second. I just have to erase that one. Now maybe you're trying to wonder, or you're, you are wondering about the whether you should get meters per second. So one way of checking that, as you are already aware, is to break out the, the units. So Newton is just kilogram times meter per second squared. You divide that by meters. So this is just the term Newton per meter, and then meter square all over kilograms. So when you do that, um, you should, it's very apparent that kilogram will cancel out. Um, yeah, this one also will cancel out, so you are left with meter squared over second squared. So when you take the positive square root, you end up with meter per second. And that should be, an, or that is what we are expecting from the problem. So um, going back to what is asked in the problem, we basically have answered part A. That is the speed of your block as it moves along the surface. Now for part B, we will consider from the case of, or the points of B to C. So when we try to set up the equation for B, uh, part B, take note that we are looking for this D, not with the H. But we cannot get D without solving for H yet. And you will get to see later the application of your geometry class. Now, from point B, point B to point C, um, the conservation of energy dictates that all of the energy, the sum of the energy at point B should just be equal to the sum of the energy at point C. Now let's go back to the sketch and check uh, what are the energies present at point B. So we could have, uh, again, uh, it could, we could have a gravitational potential at energy at B and also the kinetic energy at B. Now at point C, going back to the sketch, the same case. So we could have a uh, gravitational potential at C plus the kinetic energy at C. But then again, at close inspection, going back to the sketch, you notice that the point B actually has H is equal to zero or is along H is equal to zero. Therefore, your gravitational potential energy at that point is just zero. Um, the kinetic energy at B, of course, not a value anania. So this one has values also, these two terms over here. So I'm going to um, break down that equation, and that will lead to 1 half m, the velocity at b squared is equal to, um, this is just mgh plus uh, 1 half m, the velocity at c squared. Okay, I actually missed something. <laughs> Yeah, the problem actually states that um, how far does the black travel up in incline before starting to slide down? This implies, as I've said earlier, that this only happens when the velocity is zero, and that happens at point C. So this further simplifies our equation in the sense that this, that this term also becomes zero. Right, so this is looking good because we are now dealing with a quite simpler equation. So we now have one half m velocity at b squared is just equal to m g h. Now as you can see, your mass is a common term on both sides, so you could just divide it by m or multiply it by 1 over m. And in doing so, your masses would cancel out 
and you are left with VB squared all over 2, and that is just GH. So you are looking for H, so it's very clear what you will do, right? So you will simply have to multiply both sides by 1 over G or divide both sides by G. So that is the same thing. And so you end up with an expression of VB squared. Do not forget that you still have G on the left-hand side of the equation. That is all equal to H. And when you substitute the values, we already solved for VB earlier. That's 3.11 meters per second if I remembered it correctly multiplied by 2 times the acceleration due to gravity on earth which is just 9.8 meters per second so that will give you a value of h that is equal to um, 0 0.49 meters okay so however this is not yet the prop the final answer let's try to go back to the sketch so the 0 0.89 meters that you are seeing is just this one. Okay. So take note that is the height from the base or from the ground going up to point C. But that is not what is asking the problem. What is asked in the problem is how far does the block travel up. So you are looking for this D. So how will you get that one? So if you are thinking, oh my god, this is a problem of geometry, you are right, okay? Because we are actually going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this one in the sense that we are able to create a right angle over here. So I'm just going to sketch that again here. So um, you have this incline, and then this one, and then this one. So you knew that your height here is 0 0.49 meters. The angle, if I'm correct, is 37 degrees, and you're looking for this D. Okay, that D over there. So what you're going to do is what? So this is your 90 degrees, right? So you're looking for D. So the trigonometric, func trigonometric function that you're going to use is sine. So the sine of angle theta is just equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, if you remember it right. So our angle here is sine our, is 37 degrees. So that means to say that the sine of 37 degrees is equal to its opposite. Its opposite being the height h. So that's h over the hypotenuse. It means to say the opposite of the 90 degrees. That is your hypotenuse, which is d. So that is h over d. And you're looking for D, right? So um, cross multiplication will yield to H all over the sine of 37 degrees. So substituting values, we knew H to be 0 0.49 meters divided by sine of 37. So this is not a special angle. So yun niyo magamit pa tong ato ang unit circle ani. So maybe uh, you just have to calculate that one. And when you plug in the values, that will give you 0 0.81 meters. And this is your final answer. It means to say that this D in our problem over here, this one, is actually equal to 0 0.81 meters. So I'm hoping you realize something that you have to understand what is really asked in the problem. Because most likely, you would have just solved for H in this and stopped here. However, you should realize that that is actually not what is asked in the problem. But this length D over here. So that is why this is how you solve the problem. Okay? So I'm hoping you do understand this one. And if you have some questions, maybe reserve that for um, our discussion on Monday. And then prepare also for a quiz by Tuesday in preparation for the quarter exam.